The newest 2.0 update is just around the corner, and these are the five biggest considerations that can help you prepare in advance for Inazuma region. For an update that features a massive new region, Mihoyo surely spent a good amount of time introducing the newest gardening system for the Serenity Pot, and for a good reason too. Now, that mainly has to do with the fact we're going to be able to grow our very own ascension materials, or at least the flowers and the plants, that not only will save us a good amount of time, but it will also help gather things more efficiently. And the most important takeaway here would be to stock up or at least save up on those realm coins, unless of course you're still in the middle of maxing out your production rates, but even then, from the pricing we saw on the developer's notes, there will be two things we'll need to grow our own ascension materials, which are going to be the seeds that can be purchased from the realm shop, or they will also become available from the actual materials you gather from, like picking sweet flower and then also getting its seed at the same time. But the more interesting part will be the new tab added to the depot shop called the Riches of the Realm, where you will be able to purchase three different kinds of fields where you can sow the seeds and then harvest them. And this is where things get unclear. How many fields will you be allowed to allocate on your realm? Will you be able to maintain separate fields on your three different realm layouts, and if that's the case, then how many coins should you set aside for such an awesome feature, considering we can even see some of the materials here, which are assumed to be from Inazuma, so we're basically going to be able to set up a harvesting farm of all the three regions of the game, and this could cost a pretty penny. There's also the fact it's going to take a while to harvest the crop, because from the previews we saw, it can take up to 2 days and 22 hours, so dumping a lot of coins immediately, and getting out as many fields as possible to start waiting on that 3 day progress bar, is probably going to be the most common an approach a lot of experienced players will use. So in essence, if you're interested in cultivating your own fields that produce ascension materials for your characters, or if you want to cook more dishes, then setting aside a good amount of realm coins to at least purchase some of the fields to start your harvesting journey can be one of the ways to prepare for the upcoming 2.0 update. With the new region comes new sets of things, and if the pattern is the same, then you can expect the newest enemies to drop their own unique materials, since we already know that Inazuma flowers and world bosses will offer different kinds of materials, so it only makes sense to assume the same thing here as well. Now we don't know exactly what other new materials will be introduced, but if you'd like to feel prepared, then the obvious suggestions you probably heard somewhere else are true, like stocking up on crystal ores for those new upcoming craftable blacksmith weapons, just in case if they turn out to be amazing not just for beginners but veterans as well, or if you're in the market for the new upcoming artifact sets, then there's no better way to do it than to save up on fragile resin, or, and let's not forget, if you're in a rush to do things, then most of the new monster materials will probably end up on the Stardust shop, so you might just want to save up on it, but only if you want to get things done more quickly. More importantly, we saw a lot of previews of the region itself and the puzzles within it, and it's clear as a day it will require you to capitalize on the electro element. Now puzzle solving isn't the issue here, but deciding on which electro character you want to use and the new region for smooth world exploration can be a good idea, especially if you want to get things done without needing to constantly switch up your party to get an electro character in. And we've already seen from the trailers and the marketing materials that it's been pretty much confirmed the Traveler will be getting their own electro form, so if you have been neglecting the siblings for this whole time, maybe now would be a good idea to raise them at least to level 70 or 80, since it does matter for those newly improved transformative reactions. But we also know that Beto will be given out for free during one of the 2.0 major events, but it's not clear when this will be happening, so you might not get her on day one when Inazuma arrives. And in all honesty, we already have Lisa who can do electro damage with her basic attacks, so you can easily use her for exploration, but since there's always different options out there, deciding with whom we will spend a good majority of time inside the new region can be a good idea, especially if you want to prepare now. After all, we don't know how tough these new enemies are, but going back to the time when we first set foot on Dragon Spine, it was clear that pyro characters would literally keep us alive and well during that time, so maybe an Electro character will be as essential as Pyro was to Dragon Spine. After nearly 9 months of waiting, we're finally getting an option to reroll our artifacts, and with only the few sentences we got to hear from the official livestream, you will be able to sacrifice 3 5 star artifacts in exchange for one that will belong to one of the 4 different sets which haven't been announced yet. Luckily, you can choose which of the sets you want to obtain the newly produced artifact, so the biggest mystery as of now would be what sets will Mihoyo decide to make available for rerolls. Now, to be frank, this doesn't sound too great because a lot of people expected an actual reroll mechanism 
mechanism where you can adjust the substats, which is the biggest grind in the entire game, especially for those who don't even use primogens to refresh for more resin. And if you do a reroll, you're basically giving up 3 5 star artifacts, which we have to assume are terrible either way, for a chance to obtain a better one. But this also means losing out on roughly 11,000 experience points, which could be used for leveling up your existing artifacts instead. The flip side is, of course, you might get a good artifact from one of the four sets you're interested in, so maybe it's useful to some people, but in the long run, burning your experience points with another gambling mechanism might not prove to be very free to play friendly. Still, if you're interested in this newest upcoming feature, then setting aside your 5 star artifacts, which are only good as experienced father, might be a useful thing to do, just to see if you can get lucky and obtain a new one with a proper main stat and decent sub stats. Although, keep in mind, we still have to suffer through the randomized luck of actually raising those good sub stats we get. Either way, this new feature is at least a step in the right direction, and hopefully, Mihoyo will become even more loose in the future and introduce a way to actually reroll the substats themselves. But for now, save up a couple of those unneeded 5 stars for 2.0 and let's see what we can reroll into once this new update arrives. Since we're already on the topic of artifacts, might as well take a look at the two newest ones, which are coming with the Inazuma update, and surprisingly, these new sets are looking to be very flexible and might become the next alternatives for some of the more popular sets. Now, it's probably safe to say the most exciting one here is going to be the Emblem of Severed Fate, just for the simple reason we're finally getting a 5-star artifact that provides energy recharge from its set bonus, because up until now, you either had to use Scholars or Exiles, which are 4-stars and don't exactly have the best four set bonuses in terms of offense, but this new one here is going to be pretty amazing, especially for characters like Mona, who not only has energy recharge as ascension stat, but also gains additional hydro damage bonus from the stat itself, although she is an extreme example of benefiting a lot from the set, but most other supports will get a lot from it too, especially if they have expensive burst costs, which is a win-win situation where you can reduce the time it takes to charge it up, and even becomes more powerful with the four set bonus. So if you're on the lookout to beef up your support character, you might as well save up the resin for this new set, at least so that you can farm a few decent two set bonuses and slap them onto someone who has trouble with gaining energy fast enough. But more importantly, if these two artifact sets end up in the same domain, then it means we basically have access to a place that finally drops very flexible set bonuses because previously it was the clear pool mountain cavern that was considered a very good place to get widely applicable bonuses to many characters. But the problem of course was the bloodstained set, which only focused on physical damage dealers and ruled out anyone who used elemental attacks instead. So with the second new set, the awesome thing about it is the two set bonus, which is just your generic 18% additional attack increase, which is basically a nice way to increase damage without making any compromises. So in other words, if you're on the lookout for the next artifact sets that don't really focus on one single aspect and can help out many characters you're building, you can start saving up your resin by doing other activities like ley lines instead of farming the currently available artifact domains. Who could have known that the saying third time's a charm is literally going to be used as a way to adjust the weapon banner in this game? Now, if you haven't heard already, Mihoyo is finally adding a pity system that guarantees you can get the featured 5-star weapon you want, but this also comes with some major caveats. Now, the amount of wishing will vary due to randomization, but the fact this whole pity system doesn't carry over to the next weapon banner is the red flag you should be looking out for. Basically, you pick one of the two featured weapons on the current banner, and if you don't obtain it after two times, meaning you get the other featured weapon instead. The third time, you're guaranteed to obtain the one you actually want, but realistically speaking, that's about 200 wishes on average if you want to get the actual weapon with no way of carrying over the progress to the next banner. So to put this in the most simple terms possible, this is only a feature that's relevant for whales or high-paying customers. The only exception to this would be if you have already built two decent teams for the Abyss and you're not interested in the newest upcoming characters, and only then if the five-star weapons are going to to be as good as Staff of Homa or Jade Cutter, then maybe it's worth saving up so many wishes just to get it, but let's be honest here, not a lot of people will be in this situation simply because the biggest draw factor are the characters, not the weapons, at least when we talk about the free to play players and light spenders. But to quickly summarize, there's a few ways that you can prepare for the 2.0 update and one of them would be saving up your realm coins to purchase fields from the new gardening feature once they become available so you can start harvesting ascension materials as soon as possible. Then there's also a whole new region coming up, so the usual tips like stocking up on crystal ores for weapon experience, as well as setting aside some of the fragile resins is a no-brainer choice. But then there's also the question of which electro character you'll bring to world exploration, and seeing as how Traveler will unlock this new element, maybe 
raising them up if you haven't already is a good way to prepare for it, unless you have other Electro characters built already. And when it comes to the newest artifact reroll feature, we still don't know what sets we will be able to obtain, but setting aside some of the terrible 5 stars you don't need can be a good idea to transform them into something more useful, even if it comes with the cost of saying goodbye to those sweet artifact experience points you could have gotten instead. Finally, for the newest artifacts, they are looking like strong contenders for general use application, so if you are ever out of ideas how to build your character, these new sets look very much applicable to many situations, so using a resin for other activities before an Azuma arrives could be a decent way to prepare for these new upcoming sets. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and gently press the like button. Inazuma is just around the corner and there will be a ton of new videos coming out, so don't miss the chance to see them first. Thanks for watching the video and see you very soon.